Hey guys, I'm back with Sailor Respiration again. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the electron transport chain or the ETC. Uh, now, just to remember a little bit about what's going on so far. Starting with, we talked about glycolysis and we talked about the NADHs that were created. There was two. And we talked about the Krebs cycle in which there was NADHs and FADH, F, FADH2s, which are NADs and FADs, which are electron carriers. I told you they were going to be important. Here's where they come into importance. They come into importance in the electron transport chain. I'll just give you a brief overview of what that means. Uh, the electron transport chain is just a series of proteins that are built within the inner mitochondrial membrane. You remember what the mitochondria looks like? It looks like that beam with that uh, folded membrane inside of it. It's that their, the electron transport chain is found along the cristae within the, the mitochondria. So if we have our mitochondria, on a membrane, you know, electron transport chain is going to be found in here, okay, along those membranes. And it's involved with, it, it's composed of transport proteins and enzymes, is what the electron transport chain is composed of. And basically, what it is is how the, these hydrogens are brought to the electron transport chain and are, are shipped back and forth across the membrane and they release the energy from the electrons which allows ATPs to be produced. Now we get a yield of about 36 ATPs um, from every one glucose that goes through the entire process of glycolysis, um, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. But now notice this key fact down here in, in the bottom. All right, this is very important. It only occurs in the presence of oxygen, aerobic respiration. We've already talked about what happens when oxygen is not present. We go through fermentation, either alcoholic or lactic acid. This is in the presence of oxygen. So how does it work? Well, it works this way in that electron carriers pass the hydrogens along, and those, those hydrogens go from one enzyme to the next, such as down here at the bottom, when NAD... NADH gives off the hydrogen, the hydrogen is forced out. The FADH2 forces out the hydrogen, and then the hydrogen forces out again. Now, the end point that's looking for is the oxygen molecule and water to be created. And, you, know, you can think of it like this when you do cellular respiration, you have two byproducts you have carbon dioxide, which, if you remember, in the Krebs cycle, carbon dioxide was being released. Um, and you have water being produced. So if we think about the chemical equation, let's go back and look at the equation for cellular respiration. We start out with glucose, all right, plus oxygen, and we're going to break that down into carbon dioxide and water. Now, you know, this is the reverse of photosynthetic equation, right? Uh, so the carbon dioxide was produced during the Krebs cycle. Water is produced during the electron transport chain. Now, these, these transport proteins actually create a hydrogen gradient. If you'll notice, if I, all these hydrogens come outside into this intermembrane space, there's going to be more hydrogens outside than in, and that's going to create a gradient, which is going to be important in the next step. What happens is, when you create that gradient, you have hydrogens out here. The hydrogens are then going to want to come back through what well, this this pump and when they do they release energy and it actually creates oh ATPs okay so let's think of it this way electron transport chain is kind of like a hill as the electrons go from step to step as they go down the step they release energy as they go down uh, you can also think about like a dam you know a dam holds back water but if that water is moving it's creating it's creating uh, energy or releasing energy so if I just read this to you, it says electrons move in steps from carrier to carrier downhill toward the oxygen. And as you can see over here on the right, and here it is. It moves downhill, 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 trying to get to this oxygen molecule so it can make a water that will be released. All right. Each carrier has a is more electronegative than the next. That's why it's moved down. That's why it has a tendency to keep moving because it's more electro more attracted to it, uh, and it releases energy. Now, if you think about that gradient I was talking about a while ago, here's, here's you have more hydrogens up here. So the hydrogens want to come through and create this ATP. That's called a proton motive force. And what it is actually does, it sends it through an ATP synthase. ATP, ATP synthase is just 
an enzyme that helps produce ATPs. So when you get those hydrogens moving down through, you get ATP and the phosphate being added together with a little bit of energy. And that energy is coming from this movement of hydrogens down. And you create an ATP molecule. That's called proton motor force. And actually, this is where most of the ATPs come from in the process. Now, this process actually has a name. It's called chemiosmosis. Chemi now, usually when we think of osmosis, we think of movement of water. But actually, in this case, it's the movement of hydrogen ions uh, from, one, from a high concentration to a low concentration through this ATP synthase, synthase enzyme, which actually helps to build the ATP. All right, so now if, if we take it just beyond and kind of take a little summary here. So what's the final e electron acceptor in the electron transport chain? You need to know what that is. I hope you know it is oxygen. So what happens if oxygen is not present? Well, if oxygen is not present, bad things happen. The electron transport chain backs up. Nothing's there to pull the electrons down the chain. The NADs and the FADs can't unload their hydrogens. Um, and ATP, t ATP production stops. Cells run out of energy. And if we're talking about you, you die. So not having oxygen is not a good thing. Uh, so finally, review the whole process. Glycolysis, when we did it, we basically got two ATP net out of glycolysis. Krebs cycle, we got two. And then we go through electron transport chain and the uh, and oxidative phosphorization, we get... If you add these totals up over here, we get 34. So we get a total of 38 ATPs. Uh, somewhere thereabouts is what we get when we go through the entire process. All right, guys, I hope that this has helped you a little bit to understand what cellular respiration is. And I will talk to you later.